says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Out here in Silicon Valley, old dogs learn new tricks all the time. They just need the right trainer. That's why I've been such a huge backer of Cisco. Under the leadership of CEO Chuck Robbins, this company has transformed itself from an old school networking, mostly hardware maker, into a much more diversified business with plenty of lucrative software, especially for security, the cloud, and the internet of things. At delaying the groundwork for years, these new tricks are clearly paying off for Cisco. It blew away the numbers when it reported a magnificent beat and raise quarter last month. And the stock's now up more than 26% year to date. That's an incredible run for a $221 billion company. But don't take it from me. Let's hear from the man himself. Let's hear from Chuck Robbins. He's the turnaround artist, chairman, and CEO of Cisco Systems to find out what lies ahead for his new and improved company. Chuck, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Good, Good to, to be here. You. Thank you. Chuck, you have reinvented a gigantic company faster than I've ever seen. You are now the largest security company. You're becoming a gigantic software company. How did you change the stripes from when we used to just ask you, how switches, how's routers? <laughs> well, you know, Jim, I think, uh, first of all, thanks for having us on today. We love to be able to talk about our story. We're very proud of what we've done, and I'm proud of the team. Uh, you know, we set out a few years ago, and there were, there were a lot of great things that were already put in place. I mean, Cisco has had an incredible culture for a very long time. We've had a great brand. And the good news is the last three years, we've had a great economic tailwind. Now, all that being said, I, our teams, I think, really put together the right portfolio in true uh, you know, alignment with what's happening in the marketplace, and we're beginning to see our customers adopt that. So uh, I'm really proud of what they've done. At the same time, you have what uh, people out here call, it is, but most people won't understand, a refresh. Can you tell people what a refresh <laughs> is for a giant product that you have that is going to give you multiple years of good growth? Well, we have, uh, when, when technology has been used for five or six years, then customers tend to refresh it. So we call it a refresh cycle. And, uh, but what we really understood and what our David Geckler, my head of uh, networking engineering, understood is that you know, it, it's not financial offers that drive refresh, it's true innovation that lead our customers to want to refresh. And everything that's happening relative to the transition to the cloud is, is leading our customers to think about how they need to re-architect their infrastructure to support that. And so, We've been fortunate with the Catalyst 9000 and the adoption that we've seen there. And uh, as we've been talking about, we have a whole series of new products across the entire enterprise portfolio that fit within that architecture that are forthcoming. So we're, uh, we're pretty excited about the pipeline. And you're doing it by uh, with subscription, which I think people have to understand that if you back out the way subscription is done, you are now starting to get high single digit growth for a company that some people felt was going to be destined to do two to 3% growth for ages. Yeah, well, when we launched the Catalyst 9000, there was, uh, there was skepticism as to whether we could launch a software subscription on right. top of a network right. switch. And, and not only did we do that, but our customers were quite okay with it as the, the Catalyst 9000, turns out it was, it's been the fastest ramping product in the history of the company. So um, it is, uh, it's a great combination of high performance hardware but with really high value software with a lot of innovation in it that our customers are clearly seeing the, uh, the, the value of. All right, I read a recent presentation uh, by one of your officials and he's talking about how Cisco is now the largest enterprise security business in the world. Now that was something I didn't think of you as of just even a few years ago. Well, Jim, if you think about what our customers are facing now in the advent of the cloud, real simply, for the past decade, they've built networks and they built security architectures based on a premise that traffic begins at the edge, perhaps at the branch, and terminates in their data center, right. right? And today, what's really happening is, all the traffic still begins at the edge, but it's terminating in 100 different places. And this is the multi-cloud story that we've been talking about. Okay. So it's terminating in Microsoft, it's terminating in Amazon, Google, IBM, it's terminating in all the SaaS providers right. like Salesforce here today. And what that means is there's not a central e ingress, egress point to actually apply security anymore. Okay. So that the network firewall has historically been the control point for security. Right. In the right. new world, it's going to be identity and the cloud. Okay. And so if you think about our duo acquisition, that's where identity comes in. Right. You think about some of the work that we've been doing uh, in some of the acquisitions we made like OpenDNS and CloudLock. Right. And then there's some innovation that we're working on as well that really are going to demonstrate that this architecture we've been building for the first for the last few years 
will really be the architecture that people will understand two to three years from now as they transition more fully to multi-cloud. All right, again, two to three years, got to keep thinking of that, people, because what matters is you want, don't want short-term numbers and then pop and gone. You mentioned the top global macro tailwinds. I know that we had great tax reform in this country. It spurred, yeah. spurred a lot of growth. Uh, but we also have a situation where we're having what Jamie Dimon told me this week are trade skirmishes, the China's a trade skirmish. You've been beneficiary of the tax reform, you've done right. all the right things, uh, but you also could get hurt by a world that is putting up barriers. Well, I think, you know, when we look at the uh, tariffs today, I think that uh, lots of companies have been impacted, particularly by the 200 billion that were just recently Im implemented, which ultimately is gonna impact the consumer pricing and our customers' pricing. Uh, but we, we can at least deal with that. We know how to deal okay. with it. And, you know, we've, uh, we've had conversations with the administration. We've been optimizing supply chain, and we've applied some price increases where we had to. I think my bigger concern is what do these trade skirmishes right. or the, uh, you know, the uncertainty that's going on, at right. what point does that flow through to the, the global macro environment? And that's the bigger fear for us, and that's what we don't want to see. All right. Well. None of us want to see that. That could hurt the stock market. And one last thing, we're talking to a lot of companies out here doing great things that are about the unfortunate people who have less. You quietly have done stuff. I want to make it not quiet. Tell, tell people what you've done. Well, we've done, we've done several things. I think that uh, in particular, when you look in San Jose, just to the south, uh, Santa Clara County is the third highest county as, it, uh, as you measure chronic homelessness in the United States. And uh, it just doesn't feel like that should be occurring anywhere, much less in a wealthy county right. where we've seen so much prosperity. So earlier this year, Cisco uh, committed $50 million to try to eradicate homelessness. And uh, we're working with Destination Home there. Uh, Mark Benioff's doing a lot of work up here in San Francisco. So we're actually trying to bring together and, and drive some regional alignment around these efforts. And we're doing a lot of other things as well, but in, in this part of the world, uh, affordable housing, homelessness, hunger, I mean, these are all issues that companies in Silicon Valley have to care about, and uh, we're just trying to do our part. Thank you for talking about it. Thank you for leading by example. That's Chuck Robbins, chairman and CEO of Cisco, a very inexpensive stock that I think is about to go having another leg up. They have money back in the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.